So I went to the big auto show in Manhattan the other day. They actually gave us media credentials. With the war on cars. <laughs> What's their screening process? So when you applied for, for credentials, you said, hi, I'm representing yeah. the war on cars. Yeah. I'd like to go to the International Auto Show. Yeah, I'm a co-host of the war on cars, and I'd like to go to your auto show. And they're like, okay, sure. It's <laughs> <laughs> a very effective infiltration. Playbooks. I'm Doug Gordon, otherwise known as Brooklyn Spoke, and uh, yeah, I've been doing safe streets advocacy for a good long while. I fought for some protected bike lanes, bike parking, and do a lot of writing. People don't just fall off their bikes to get hit by cars. The, yeah. I'm Sarah Goodyear. I'm a journalist and a writer, and I've written a lot about urban design, transportation planning, human behavior in cities. I'm Aaron Napperstack. I founded Streets Blog a long time ago. I have done a lot of advocacy work around making cities better for biking and walking in transit. Why the war on cars? Well, they keep accusing us of waging a war on cars. Every time a new bike lane comes in, every time a, a parking spot gets replaced by a bike rack or a bus stop, so it's a war not, on cars. Why not just why not just own it, basically? Aaron, as we said, infiltrated the New York International Auto Show. I think I might have been the only member of the press corps uh, to arrive by city bike. So I'm not kidding, I'm not making this up. This is where we record the War on Cars. Our studio is right upstairs from just a massive parking lot in the heart of Brooklyn. Right off the bat. I stumbled into a presentation for this 1970s style uh, fossil fuel powered personal mobility technology called the Dodge Challenger Hellcat Red Eye. <laughs> a Hellcat Red Eye, like that sounds, that sounds stressful. That sounds like a really bad drink at a spring break party. They kept talking about how sinister it is. Wait, so they, they actually, it's that sinister is the branding. It's the branding. Okay. I would say the average taping is we end up with maybe close to an hour of audio and then trim it down to about 30 to 35 minutes. And they're marketing a sinister product that is more street friendly. I mean, no other consumer product is marketed, I mean, except for guns, as sinister. And certainly no product that is designed to be used among other people. Like, this umbrella is really sinister. Right. Walk right. down right. Madison Avenue like no other person. To me, that's frightening that that's like a baseline thing that, that the auto industry knows that people want to buy. Axel? So shipping like, t-shirts. Like shipping t-shirts. I'm not sure. Patreon subscribers get t-shirts. Stickers. The thing that's been most fun for me is seeing how many people are listening in different parts of the world. We have listeners in Japan, Australia, New Zealand, all over Europe, of course all over the United States. Sometimes it's so easy to get dispirited uh, when you are surrounded by cars and you feel like it's just you're never going to make any headway against them. But then you realize that there are a lot of people who feel the same way. There are a lot of young people who feel this way. India, Canada, Canada, we have a lot of Canadians, another Canadian, New Zealand. There's a lot of podcasts that talk about urban planning and transportation, and we wanted one that would speak more generally to cars as a cultural phenomenon, to all of these changes that you're seeing in cities around the world as something bigger, that there's really this hunger and thirst to fix cities so that cars are not just oppressing us every day. It's so easy to come up with ideas for War on Cars episodes. I mean, the hard part is actually like trying to produce them all. And there are a lot of people who are fighting to, to change things, and I do believe that we're getting somewhere, and it's, it's a privilege to be part of that with the War on Cars.